Don't gonna wear out finger eating guitar string special. <laughs> I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies. This, uh, this piece of wood is where this piece here was cut. We're going to go to 5 eighths and I'm going to show you why. But the thing is, this worked out perfect. It even came out to the edge of our pattern. Yeah, it's because I cut the mold first and the other piece warped, so we'll have to cut another one anyway. Anyway, we look under here and what do we see? I see light. There we go. Well, if you look at the coils here, they have a start right here. This start, that wire right there, is one eighth of an inch thick. 14 gauge wire. So as we had a half inch stator, or coil, we now have a 5 8 inch stator. This is going to cast, we're going to have to use 5 8 wood on the outside instead of half. But this will have to be 5 8 as well. But this lifts out pretty nice. I'd have this taped over here. I'd lift it up again for you. <laughs> we, but anyway, this will come off. I'm going to have my terminations over here. I've already, already done all the wiring. Uh, basically, you go through, so those who hadn't been here, coil phase one goes to the start. The finish of the coil is the outside because that's where the last wire is wrapped. And that finish comes all the way on over and goes to the start of this coil, it's like putting flashlight batteries in series and letting in a long flashlight. The finish comes out of here, it goes to the start of this one. And like this is, might be the end of the battery, the finish, of course, goes to the finish tap, which is going to be here. This is going to be phase two finish tap. And right about over here, I think I'm going to put the uh, phase three finish tap. I have measured out to figure out what I really want. And you got to make sure nothing touches. All these connections that I made, let me spin this thing around so I can show you some connections. Ooh, yuck, that, how come it's green? <laughs> right here, green fingernail polish, enamel. It keeps them from uh, shorting out. I'd rather use heat shrink, it looks a lot nicer, works a lot better, I'd say. But this is enamel, that's what's on the wire. Okay, so we got them separated and checked out, and I'm also trying to make sure the wires aren't touching any other wires where the connection is. I bent them so they kind of sit there real nice. So all this is going to stay together, and that's the reason for having this. All right, now I have the board sitting right side up. I always have an arrow up here. So this is how this is going to lay out. We're looking at our starts over here, which are close enough where I could run a, a bar across them with holes and just bolt them all down and make this all together, and that's basically what I'm going to do. But I want these separate in case I want to play with uh, delta wire. We're wiring in star. Now, all the starts get wired together. That way everything looks like a Y. This is going to be uh, phase one finish, phase two finish, and phase three finish. Everything's set and now we want to sit there and exactly map out where we're going to put these. Here we have phase three. This one comes from phase two. This is finishes, not starts, because we're working at the end right now. And this is phase one. And that's number one right there. This is where I'm going to put my dots. Tells me what color dot I want. I want that right about here. Notice I got these with a little bit of a bend. It's 5 16 by 2 and a quarter inch long. Just toilet bolt set brass. And the washers, no, they're just cheap steel ones. So we can't use all of that, we can use the bolts. But right here, down to the hardware store that didn't have the brass bolts to begin with, sold me uh, washers and nuts for those bolts, but they didn't have the bolts in brass. Anyway, solid brass uh, brass on the washers as well, got six of each. First thing I'm, I need to be doing is taking these and putting them on these bolts over here, getting them ready to put right here. So right here, this is phase three. This is phase two, that's phase one, that's my finishes. Notice how I got this routed around here, or rooted. That's phase one, that's phase two, and that's phase three. Phase three right here, phase two, phase one. The wire comes here, I got a bend on it. I got a bend on it so it comes over here, so this is flexible. It can be, when I sand it, I bend it all back down. I'm going to put these on these, and I'm going to solder them. And I'm going to run these, these nuts down there first. And that's what I'm going to put all this up against. And then I'm going to put one more brass nut right on top of it. And cinch her down. Getting these ones set. I move these ones a little bit farther apart. There's uh, phase one, phase two, and phase three. Got the wires moved gracefully set where they, they just kind of move over nicely. 
Got a little bit of slack in So phase one, phase two, phase three, I've got these curled up right here. Uh, notice this one's got an extra bend. That's for some room to play with. Take it around the edge of my finger. There we go. A lot easier. Real quick, clip off the excess. It's perfect round. I'm going to do the same thing with this. Okay, well right here we have X, Y, and Z. It's all set up. This is what it'll look like. So we, now we're going to sit here and look at what we're going to do. We're going to clean these wires. I'm going to know exactly where to clean them. Clip all my wires to the length that they're going to need. Take all the insulation off of that. Then I'm going to put it on here. And I'm going to take one of these nuts right down on it just like this. And the other nut comes down on top of it. I'm going to solder all of this. But this nut here is just a makes it just a little bit over 5 eighths of an inch. We really don't want that much. Look, I'm just over 5 eighths of an inch. I'm going to shave that nut right there about a sixteenth of an inch. I might shave it just a little bit more seeing as 5 eighths plywood is just a little bit shy of that. So anyway, that'll make a nice seal on the outside. I don't want any uh, fiberglass over it. Alright, well I clipped those wires off and I clipped those off. I'm going to straighten them out. Clean them up, sand them, get them ready to solder on here, and hook up. The thing I want to do, I want to know where I'm going to start stripping. Now we just straighten one out. I'm going to do this first. I'm going to hold it down, pull it up, and I'm going to straighten it out. And then I'm going to scrape it while I can get to all sides nice and easy. It really doesn't matter if I use the pliers to get this pretty straight. The straighter, the easier. And I'll see you when I got these stripped. Okay, next step, a pair of pliers. Vice grips if you got them, but I got these. Now when I go to solder that, I'm going to feed the solder from one end probably right there, and it'll probably go inside. And also help solder it to everything here and do the rest of that. Okay, I've got this one set up, and basically I've twisted and turned and basically got it all under the end is right up under this edge I've got that to where if I have to unthread it to get it out it's ready to go on the bolt and also it's going around this way like I said always there I'm ready to uh, twist this all the way up seems to be a little looser up here Back to the same thing again, and we're ready to tighten it up. Nice and tight. And that's number two. Okay, right here we're getting a real close-up shot of the wire after stripping. Something I wanted to bring to your attention. I get up here towards the top, you see a little bit of color. Uh-huh. Well, that's that thin inner coating that's real hard to get off. So when you scrape these, take a nice good look, and it's good to use a magnifying lens, like I got on the camera right now, to uh, take a nice close look, because that's a spot that solder's not going to stick. Usually, there's a little bit towards the end. You get it all nice and shiny between here and here. Clip that little bit of an end off, or you can just uh, scrape it and get it good. Do that before you try to tin and solder it. Right down in here, if I can get it without the light, I've already tinned that wire and it's nice and shiny. I tinned that wire, then I went ahead and put the nuts on. I'll show you how to do a little nice solder with a close-up anyway, so you get uh, the idea of it. Oh yeah, nice shiny. Looks like heaven got an aura on it. Let's bring it down into focus just a little bit. One thing I want to show you right here. Yeah, a little bit of a uh, reddish yellow at the very top, right there. That's what I was telling you, it's just a little bit there, the solder will not flow on it. And like I said, I'm just going to cut that tip off, but usually I clean it all the way to the end, but I left that there just for a demonstration. Everything tinned, except for that little bit there, and you might think it's a good tin. Look at it real close. You can scrape it and re-solder it. I'm just going to snip that little bit of an end off. That's about a quarter inch. But I've got that much wire to play with. Okay, well we got it all set up in view here. Here's the solder. And here's the soldering iron. Doesn't have much of a tip. I kind of have to stick it down in the hole up here. You want to touch it just a little bit. 
So after you've cleaned the tip, it's kind of hard to clean this tip. Now the thing is, is I have to wait for this thing to heat. It's better to do it from the bottom. Right now I have the camera in the way. I'm going to try a different angle. There we go. That ought to get it started. And the trick is, put the solder on the other side. By putting the solder on the other side, it only starts melting when the connection is hot enough. I bet you can hear that. I'll just turn this thing up. This is a good solder and I love this thing. Even though I burnt the tip off, it never fails to get a good heavy connection. There we go, the solder's flowing. It's flowing in real nice. It's flowing melting fast. And I'm taking it inside the connection on the other side. And fill that up. And now we have a nice, pretty, clean solder connection. A low wattage solder and iron will not do that. I don't like using the torch to do that, although I have. Yeah, sometimes it just really doesn't do a very good job. It overheats the metal and then oxidizes it and then the solder doesn't want to stick. And that's what a good solder joint looks like. If it's hot enough for the solder to flow by touching the piece, not the solder and iron. If you try to solder by putting the solder to the solder and iron, uh, you wind up with a cold solder joint. And leaving the heat on the solder too long, getting the solder hot rather than the uh, rather than the piece that you're trying to solder, usually gets the solder too hot because it's cooked too long and it'll come out crystallized and it's still a cold solder joint. You see the way it kind of flowed over the edge of the uh, nut all on its own and all around the base. This is something very important. You don't want a bad solder joint inside your mold. If it, it gets hot, then the solder melts, and then you got problems. Anyway, this one's done, and I'm going to go ahead and set her in. I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies. Okay, I finally got it finished. I soldered, uh, went ahead and sanded down the other nut. This is exactly 5 8 inches long from there to there. And I put one little dot of solder on that first thread. Uh, the connector is always going to be a little thicker and then the next nut will come down. So that's not going to be a problem. But the main deal is to lock that. I tighten these nuts real hard towards each other. And I, ran, I put the soldering iron right there. And then ran the solder all the way around and it just flowed right in. And I locked it right there. So this one is ready to set up and it'll be done. I got six more nuts to sand down. It takes a while. Bolts get hot while they're on there. Okay, and it's always a good idea, like I said before, to tin. And this is the proper way to tin. A lot of people want to sit there and go like this, up and down the wire. Like I said, that makes a cold solder joint. Prime it just a little bit, touch it, it'll start to heat. Put your solder here. Start at the top, move your solder and iron down, and go right on down the wire. That way you've done nothing but Clean the wire with the flux, and all the way on down. And that's way too much right there. Don't solder above your coils the way I just did. Now I'm going to have to dig solder out of it. That's not good. Anyway, and there's your nice solder tinned wire. And when you go to solder, the solder will flow there first. That's how I keep it in the joint instead of all over the nut and everything else. I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energy. Hey, you look at this one, it looks a little different. See how small that hole is right there for the Phillips bit. This is a different bolt, so I couldn't find the other ones. And look at that profile. That profile used to look like this. I stuck it in the drill press. I took the grinder to that nice round curve spot. I even took it in up to where my fingernail is. That's why that hole at the end is so small. Then I took the edge of the file, kept going straight down till I got it nice and thin. Which is about the same thinness as that. Anyway, I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energy.